Hi everyone, welcome back to The Grind. Today we are talking about death. Great. Wow. Yay. Yeah, Ooh. death. I know, right? It's fantastic. A, it's a fantastic, fantastic topic. Fantastic. And I think it's something that we don't really think about too often, but the way Pastor was sharing about it, I think sometimes it's good to have in mind a day with death because that gives you a greater appreciation for your life on mm. earth. Yeah. So here's a very fun question to start off starts off with if you had one more week to live how would you live time is an issue money is an issue how money you... isn't an issue right yeah money isn't... nothing's an issue if you have one more you just said time. time isn't an issue but we have one week to live <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'd say time is because probably I, wanted, I, was, yeah, I was about to say so so time is not an issue wait what <laughs> i'd say sorry. time is probably the biggest issue in this situation time is your greatest enemy. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to say, money isn't an issue, but yes, time is an issue, but yes, even more. Clearly. Moment. You know what? Yeah, you get, you get you get a question. What do you, what would you do? Clearly not spend time answering this question. Of course, if money is not tight, then I will have everyone I love, including you guys, we will go for traveling. Aww. Everyone, family, we go travel. As far as we can. I, I think we'll just take turns, like, not yeah. die in the same week. So, <laughs> you'll know, die first and the first, I don't know. Mm, yeah, travel probably, just yeah. just to absorb everything before I go. Yeah. Quite similarly, but maybe more specifically, I would probably spend the last week traveling around England, my happy place. England? Yeah. Nice. I would not be here. <laughs> that is that is for sure. Oh wow. Um, yeah, I think the go-to thing is travel, and you know a whole bunch of bu of bucket things I want to do like hot air balloon, oh. and I would like to skydive. Maybe that's the last thing that I would do. So just in case if <laughs> things happen, and then in the <laughs> mid-flight, uh, Petrina said, "Oh, the parachute." That's okay, I'm already happy. this is the end of my week, I'm oh, done, well. oh well, bye everyone, this is a great way to go out. But yes, definitely do things off my bucket list. Mm -hmm. mm. So speaking okay. of which, actually, how would you want to go out? I actually wouldn't want to go out like on skydiving, that would be a little bit too painful because I can imagine the... I hope so. I mean, yeah. if you land in the field, yeah, it'd be instant. Yeah, but I would like to go out in my sleep, painlessly. Same, same. Would you guys prefer, well, your, your, your answer is pretty much answered the question, but what? do you guys prefer knowing your doom or not knowing it? I don't think I want to know. Have you watched Sandman? No. no. What's that? So, um, in that series, death is represented by you know a person, a physical person, uh -huh. oh, and they when they die, she visits them and says, "Come on, we gotta go." Oh. And then you know some people kick up a fuss. Like, no, come on, not yet, not yet. You know, just a little bit more time. And the others go, "Oh, okay, all right, let's get let's get going." I I, I hope it's a little bit like that. Oh. Yeah. Like someone so just clear. comes to get me. Like the, yeah, I'll give it yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely thought about ways I could have I could die. And but I think one of my greatest fears about how I go out is that no one knows I'm dead. Uh, oh. Like maybe I slipped at home, like hit my head and I'm dead. And I'm in the house for like three days and no one knows that pet's gone. Is it the feeling that no one knows that you're gone or is it the feeling that you are alone? Possibly both. Oh. Like, you know, like you're laying there and you're like dying, but there's nothing that you can do. And it's like... <laughs> Anyways, but that's how I've definitely thought about, definitely COVID. That's how I thought it would be a very sad way to die. Mm. This is a much less cool way to die. Except yeah. that, you know, Tuesday mornings, people will definitely know I'm missing because meetings. <laughs> wow. So we just have to wait till the next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah see what if she's really? alive. <laughs> okay, we've, we've, we're, okay, but I know we talk about death and stuff, but here's the thing though, mm -hmm. why is the day of death better than the day of birth? Because you're very careful what you do. Everything that you you do on that day, 
you're accountable with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like because you're reminded that, yeah, these are things that are temporary and my life's temporary. And I know every decision that I make mm -hmm. is accountable. I am accountable mm. to it. So when when death, when when your last day is in your mind, mm -hmm. then everything is counted. Like you, it's it's. I don't know if it's the right word to say like calculated, but it's just you're careful. Yeah. With what yeah. you're you're doing. I think and just you're aware how you approach people as well. So yeah. 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 It, it gives you the wonderful gift of self awareness. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Self awareness. Yeah, Some people good. could do with more self awareness. I guess that means that you think. No, more I mean about not that. not as in like self awareness as in like. Oh right. Yes. You're a knob. Like as in <laughs> self awareness as in you're not invincible. Right. Yes. Like True. you will die one day. Mm. Um, True. And you are finite. Memento mori. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. I see. I think it's all a matter about perspective, right? Because yeah. I think some people can get so caught up about death and just focusing like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, and just live in fear. Yeah. And then the yeah, life yeah. just accounts to nothing. It's like the other side of the spectrum. Like, you yeah. guys like, have these people who are like reckless yeah. with the decision makers, yeah. but then the others are like... Yeah, so you want to have a balance of making the most of your life because yes, you have this one life to live. It's not mm -hmm. like YOLO, but how do you make the most out of it? And like the perspective, I think it's important because I think the perspective that the perspective that you have on life dictates the way you live it. So mm. if you're seeing that, well, everything's vanity, nothing's going to matter, then your life is just going to be like, that's it. Mm -hmm. But if you're having this lens that, okay, there's still good in life and yeah. I'm here for a season and yes, death is coming, but until then, what can I do with my life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how can you find good in life? Rika, I'm gonna let you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think, like, like what we're just saying now is all about like how we decide things and how we do mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I think it's about our perspective as well. Like, yeah. the perspective has a big role in how we see things, mm -hmm. whether if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, like I've known people who had like the most. Is the word crappy okay? Yeah, the crap, yeah. the crappiest thing in life. But then, you know what? I'm still okay. Yeah. Like, I remember there's this joke that um, Russell Peters he was talking about these people who, who are poor and stuff, like like who are like on the streets. Yeah. And then there's this guy who doesn't have limbs. Yeah. And then there's this other guy who just have the head, and the head guy, the guy with the head said like, I'm still okay. <laughs> But the the guy with just the, with no the limbs, limbs were complaining. Oh. So like like in that that illustration is about like the mindset and the perspective, oh, right. perspective of how you yeah. live your life as well. I don't know if it's the best one, but I'm just yeah. thinking of that. I mean, when you think about that, the, I mean, when I'm thinking about the guy with no limbs, I'm thinking about Nick. Vujicic. Oh, Vujicic. Yeah. Vujicic. Yep, him. And it's an unfortunate situation to be in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he seems. I remember seeing him speak, and he's like so joyful he's a motivational speaker right exactly yeah, yeah. So, so it's crazy yeah yeah so he can do quite a bit <laughs> with his life and dude got married too so yeah i remember he mentioned something about he was worried about getting married and then eventually have children and, and would have, have the have same condition yeah yeah but then yeah so wait did he have kids he has, he has kids yes. and are they they're all they're good fine. they're fine um no no because i i saw him say something about like yeah when he grew up, he was really, he was really down on himself, basically because of you know the way he, yeah. he was. Mm. But then, you know, as he progressed in life and he started doing this, he started his career. He managed to help a boy in a similar situation mm. feel better about himself. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> him having that condition, that like helping someone else, made it worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I think about the stuff that I've been through. I'm like, God, why? Why have to go through this? But then, it in a way, it helps me to relate to people who are going through similar situations now that you bring that up. Yeah. And, and able to connect with them and encourage them in my own small way with my story. And if they're encouraged, awesome. If I help them out of their little pit of despair, awesome. So I think it's a matter of transforma uh, transforming the way you think and the way you see the world. Mm. So speaking of like, how can you find good in life? So we go back to Solomon, and Solomon mentions two things that are good, wisdom and wealth. Why do you think these are good? Well, I, I suppose if we're talking wealth, you'd also need wisdom to, yeah. to handle to it properly. It. Yeah. Yeah. 
Otherwise, you could be like every lottery winner under the sun and like spend it in two weeks. Mm. I totally agree with you. I was, I was actually thinking about it as well. Just um, wisdom and wealth. Well, wisdom particularly is needed. Wealth sometimes is not. It's it's a, an advantage. Yeah. yeah, I should say. Yeah, it's a blessing. You could just fall into it. Yeah, but really. for wisdom, you need get, you need to get this from God. Like yeah. sometimes um, people say that. I mean, some people would consider themselves wise. But I would say that they're more knowledgeable rather than mm -hmm. being wise because yeah. sometimes, like, you can be very uh, smart and know knowledgeable about certain things, but then yeah. how you deal with it is not the wisest things. Yeah, but then in wealth, like like what you guys are saying, wealth, you, uh, usually it's a blessing because you don't always have it. But I think having uh, wealth is an advantage because you can be able to achieve a lot of things, and then now that. And if you have wisdom, you can yeah. be able to do a lot of good things yeah, with, yeah. Your with your wealth. So. Yeah. Because I think there was definitely an analogy that was talked about, like the difference between authority, wisdom, and and knowledge. Like knowledge is like, for example, knowing that you have a gun. Um, then uh, wisdom is knowing how, how you use the gun, and authority is knowing when to use it. Oh. Like especially like like say, you know. Mm. Um, in law enf enforcement or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but something like that. I mm -hmm. may have messed up the analogy, but yeah, basically just knowing what you have and mm -hmm. how to use it, mm -hmm. and that's wisdom. And yeah, I think wisdom is something that we should ask the Lord continually for. Because yes. sometimes, I think every day I'm like, Lord, give me wisdom on how to handle certain situations. Yeah. So, death is a common reality that we need to face and we cannot delay it. Yeah. So, you can try to delay it, but it's common. Yeah. And I think death makes us reflect on things that matter and hence the whole, like what you mentioned earlier, mem memento mori. Mm. Like having that thing to remind ourselves that the day of death mm. is coming. Mm. So how has death helped you reflect on your own life? Well, as I, as I get older, um, it's kind of like what I said before, I mm. realize I'm not invincible. I think when, when you're in your teens and your 20s, maybe. Um, mm. And I don't know, maybe you feel the same way. Right. Um, you do feel somewhat invincible, like life is going to go on forever. Yeah. Um, but as things have progressed, I've become more aware of my own, of my own mortality. Yeah. And that is, it is going to end at some point. Um, yeah. And I think when I panic, it's like, oh my, my gosh, like I've done nothing. I need, to, I need to get on the bike and actually do something. Yeah. Um, but... Also, at the same time, when I've stopped panicking, uh, it's like, I really do need to enjoy what I've got. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. Totally agree. Make the most of every day, as cheese.com mm -hmm. as that is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, try not to waste any time. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, one thing that it, when, when, we, when I think about death, and, and, and for me, is just the fact that you know, sometimes when, when we talk about death, we always look at it as if like uh, it will come, like it will eventually come. Yeah. But the question would be also is that are you are you making decision based as if that particular time would be now? Yeah. You get what I mean? Like yeah. it's not definite. I mean, like I hope it's not now. But I'm just saying, like <clears throat> like the way you think about things, the way you make decisions is as if your decisions are made based on it's your last day or it's your last moment yeah. right. so i think these one of the things that i've been really like pondering especially like i said you, to you guys like last year one of the most uh, fearsome experience i've had was the time when i found out that <clears throat> my health was yeah, not yeah, good yeah. Yeah. yeah that time i started panicking uh i actually cried to rachel about it as well and then she's like oh you're gonna be fine and stuff like that but i cannot stop thinking about mm. like uh and then the first thing that I think about is the people that I'm around with. Mm -hmm. And and I think that one is a good reminder as well because I think the the one of the things that Jesus has been doing throughout his life also is about thinking about others. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that God has reminded me as well is that uh, the things that I make the decisions that I make um, I need to also look about think about people as well, like the people yeah. around me, the people that I care about, the people around me, and 
<clears throat> and at the same time, not to stress myself out, but yeah. at the same time, enjoy the, those moments with, with the people around me. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, actually thinking about like, you know, having in mind the day of death, Jesus was one person who had in mind the day of death, like ever since, mm -hmm. ever yeah, since, yeah, like yeah. from the beginning. And like he said it like three times in the book of Luke, like, oh, you know, my, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And people's like, huh? I don't understand. And having in mind that this death equates to, well, eternal life for everyone and salvation, mm -hmm. then he, it basically gives what he does on earth more purpose and more meaning. So in a way, yeah. I guess, I was like, just think about that as you were sharing. Yeah. But this I week. think like death is, yeah, cannot delay it. And I remember the first time I had any experience with death was my grandma. I remember coming home one night and I see my family on one side of the of the living room. Mm. I'm like, okay, what's going on? I was like, hi, you know, the, and then they're like, Ama died. And oh, I was like, wow. Sh I didn't know how to respond. And, and it was, I think quite a surreal incident because number one, I never knew what grief was and again, didn't know how to handle that emotion. So that weekend, I remember flying back from my grandma's funeral and that and because my grandma's family was like have their own Taoist traditions or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's all this like rituals and everything. And I'm just watching everything and just also again, everything was just numb. Mm -hmm. I just. I think it just really hit me that when I saw my grandma in the coffin, I was like, this is, this is it, you know? And I know that the last days of my grandma wasn't necessarily the best because mm -hmm. women didn't exactly have much purpose. And I know it sounds kind of hard to say, but yeah. like maybe it was better that she passed instead of like having no meaning and just every day stuck in a room. And mm. I think it just made me be reflective of like my time and my family and and just having purpose till the end yeah, yeah. and i think sure. about like one thing about death as well is because a lot of people think of death as a bad thing yeah i'm not necessarily saying it's a good thing as well yeah. but yeah. it's just the fact that people usually like there are some people that i've i've come across with when when we talk about death it's as if it's a cursed thing yeah or like i don't know if you guys get what I mean like yeah, people yeah. like say like oh the reason why he died is because of like this like yeah, that yeah yeah like yeah. he crossed someone you know yeah, or yeah. He, he made a mistake and if he didn't put that red flower in or something like that yeah, yeah something, something like that but in reality um, but if you think about what we're talking about is that death is a stage in life it's yeah. it's part of life it's, and it's the reality that we have yeah no matter what decisions we have made it's just gonna come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. obviously don't make dumb decisions like, you know, cross, of course, of course, like cross the road when you shouldn't be crossing the or road. So, skydiving without a parachute. <laughs> yeah, or skydiving without a parachute. Or, yeah. you know, take on a bear thinking that you can take it on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as we think about death, right? Like life is fully, more fully appreciated with grave in mind. That's what Pastor was sharing. Mm, yeah. And so to land this discussion with the last question, how can we find gladness in times of sadness? Yes, thinking about death can be a bit sad, but mm -hmm. how can we find gladness in times of sadness? I don't know if this is gladness, but one thing I've experienced, like when you were talking about your grandma passing, yeah. uh, of course I've had cases, uh, situations and periods where we had loved ones where we passed as well. Those are the moments when you also start to reflect on your time with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know if it's gladness, but I think it's just that you're grateful that they yeah. are part of your life. Yeah. And you, you enjoy every moment that you have with them. Yeah. And, and just appreciate their life. Yeah. So I think that's one thing for me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why, like, I guess sometimes when people pass, we have celebrations of their lives. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It is. I mean, it, it is sad when someone when someone does die. But like you said, you had time with them. Yeah. Um, but I also think it's a good opportunity to reflect on the time that you've got left. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, like That's grab true. that by the scruff of the neck and actually yeah. just like go and do something. Like you said, have purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, maybe it's not gladness, but or, or you could call it I don't know some sort of motivation to do something. I, I don't know. Yeah. But. It's an opportunity to, in a way, flip the script in the way that 
yeah. you know, a lot of people would look at it. Yeah. Um, almost like a lot of things we talk about, almost like counterintuitive. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But to really reflect on someone else's life and also on your own yeah. as well. All right, so at the end of the day, you know, it's important to focus on the depth of your life mm -hmm. and not necessarily the length and, you know, again, to find meaning and purpose. Yeah. So, yeah, live your life to the fullest, yeah. knowing that your time on earth is limited, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So, yep, thanks for, you know, this really deep thought-provoking discussion yeah. and uh, yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be good life that we have celebrate yep. life yeah all right thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next week bye bye, bye.